So, you just bought all the parts to your fancy PC, and you need a little bit of help assembling it. Get yourself a decent work area, grab your components, and a Phillips screwdriver, if you can, preferably magnetic. Start by placing your case on your work area, and removing the side panel of your case by unscrewing the thumb screws located at the back. Then, remove the panel by pulling back on it so it pops off the side. In this case, we have a power supply shroud and a hard drive shroud that will need to be removed before we can install the power supply. Like before, in order to remove the side panel, unscrew the thumb screws at the back and pop off the panel. Then, remove the shrouds by unscrewing the thumb screws and popping those out as well. Now, we're going to install the power supply. Some computers may have the power supply pre-installed, but if not, just make sure the power supply is in the correct orientation. This case has a dust filter on the bottom, so we'll be flipping it upside down and mounting it to the bottom of the case. Then, take the four included screws and screw them to the back of the case to secure the power supply to the case. Next, we're going to prepare the motherboard. Begin by taking the motherboard out of the anti-static bag, making sure to grab onto the plastic components and not the electronic circuits, or else risk damaging the motherboard. Now place it on top of the box it came in. Let's hold on a moment on building the PC and take a look at the important parts of the motherboard that we'll be using. This is the CPU socket where we'll be placing our processor. These are the SATA ports where we'll be connecting our solid state and hard drives. This is the 20 plus four pin connection where we'll be installing the power to the motherboard. Here is the PCIe slot where we'll be installing the graphics card. These spots here are the RAM slots where we'll be installing the memory and no, you cannot download more RAM. <laughs> Trust me, I tried. In the motherboard box, you should find an I.O. shield. Take that and install it into the back of the case by pushing it into the slot. Make sure that you orient it properly so that when you install the motherboard, it's not upside down. Grab the brass standoffs in your motherboard box and align them to the inside of your case based off of what type of motherboard you have. Some cases, however, may come with these pre-installed. Line them up according to your motherboard and screw them in. Now, we're going to install the CPU, or central processing unit. Remove your CPU from the box and be sure to handle the CPU with care, making sure not to touch the silver square or the pins on the other side, as the pins are extremely fragile. Undo the processor clamp and remove the plastic processor cover from the motherboard. Holding it from the plastic, find the arrow in the corner of your processor and align it to the arrow on the CPU socket on your motherboard. Drop the processor right down on it, and once it's oriented properly, close the clamp to secure the CPU. This may require a little bit of pressure. Next, grab your heatsink, and if there's no thermal paste pre-applied, grab the thermal paste that comes in the box. Be sure to apply just a small amount in the center of the processor. Definitely don't touch it, as there's not really a need to spread it as the secure fit of the heatsink will distribute the paste. Now, secure your heatsink to the motherboard, making sure to tightly screw down the screws properly to distribute the thermal paste underneath. Connect the CPU fan power to the pins on the motherboard, and now we're going to move on to the RAM. Installing the RAM is as easy as finding the notch on the RAM and finding the same notch in the RAM slot. Open up the side clamps on the slot and place the RAM in the slot and press down until you hear both sides click. If your motherboard has more than a few RAM slots, simply look at the motherboard and it should tell you which is slot 1, 2, 3, and so on. Next, we're going to place the motherboard inside the case, but to do this, we need to turn the case onto its side. Place your motherboard on top of the brass standoffs that we previously installed and secure the motherboard by screwing it into the brass standoffs with the included screws. The next step is installing the drives. For this build, we have a solid state drive and a hard drive. To mount the solid state, simply slide the 2.5 inch drive into the drive slot around the side of the case, making sure the power and SATA port face the proper direction. That's it. Now for the hard drive, remove the 3.5 inch drive mount from inside the case and place the drive in the mount and slide it back into the slot. Next, grab a SATA cable and notice the way the connector goes. The orientation of the cable matters because of the shape of the connector. Now, connect it from the back of each drive into the SATA ports on your motherboard and that's it. Now we're going to install the graphics card. We do this by unscrewing the screws on the back plate of the case relative to where the PCIe port is on your motherboard, and removing the plates by sliding them out of the case. Much like the RAM, when you install the graphics card, it should click. 
screw the graphics card into the case, and now your graphics is all set. Don't worry, I know that there's a lot of steps, but we're almost done. We're now going to attach the power cables to our power supply. Since our power supply is modular, we're going to only plug in what we need. We need to plug in power to the motherboard, CPU, graphics card, then SATA to both drives. If possible, try to wire as much behind the motherboard to help airflow and keep a clean look. Once all the power cables are plugged into the supply, we can now feed them to the proper units. Take the cable labeled motherboard and connect it to the 20 plus 4 pin connector on the motherboard. Connect the CPU power to the CPU power slot located around the processor on the motherboard. Connect the graphics card power to the graphics card and SATA power into the drives. Everything should be plugged in by now. Next, we're going to connect the HD audio cable to the audio port on the motherboard. Then, the USB 3.0 interface into the USB 3.0 port. Connect the front case fan to the motherboard with the system fan 2 pins located underneath the motherboard power. Lastly, the front I.O. ports on the PC. This one can be tricky and you may have to check your motherboard's manual to make sure everything is plugged in properly. But luckily, the motherboard did come with a neat little organizer that makes our job a little easier. Once the computer is properly plugged in, grab a screen, mouse, and keyboard and boot up the computer. If it doesn't boot up, it means something isn't plugged in, so go back and make sure everything is plugged in. If it does boot up, congratulations, you just built your first PC. Once everything looks good, you'll be able to clean up whatever cables you weren't able to manage before, and add a few zip ties to secure everything. I hope you liked this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.